Welcome to Miss Clark Reads to You. We are reading Chapter 5 in Death Watch by Rob White. I've left the board open because I might draw a couple um, key points, key details from the text. Ben had given up hope of finding water. He stood on the edge of the cliff and thought bitterly that even the bighorn were against him. The big sheep had left a well-worn trail along the ridge of the mountains, which he had been able to follow even in the pre-dawn light. And such a trail should have led to water. Instead, it came to this cliff and ended. Sign of bighorn going off in all directions. It was a trick, Ben thought. Like Madoc, they were playing with him, killing him. Without water, there was no contest. All Madoc had to do was wait out the few remaining hours. For the first time, Ben felt a deep, almost paralyzing fear. It was not the sharp, mouth-drying fear he'd felt walking away from Madoc and expecting the bullet to slam into him. This fear was deep inside him, a huge, dark fear a foreboding. So now we're moving from the tone of being hopeful, and this is a really great word, foreboding, like this, this fear and this regret and this cloud hanging over him. So his, his attitude now towards this situation is to just that it's a, it's a cloud. It's inevitable that he is going to die. And then when the first light of the sun touched the ground at the base of the cliff, he saw the catch basin, a small one. A hollowed area in the rock, perhaps 10 feet across, and he guessed not more than three or four feet deep. Bighorn tracks were all around it to get the water. They had pawed the sand out of the hollow so that it formed a sort of fan around the basin. As he looked down, the dark fear inside him seemed to shrink a little, to withdraw a little. Not 50 feet from him, there was water. Not much, the hollow was small and shallow, and the bighorn had been working it, but the sand showed some dampness. And he had better implements than the big horn. His hands were more efficient with their hooves and could do a better job. So he's just making a mental comparison. So the hooves dig out the sand to get the water, but his hands could do a much better job of sifting out the sand to get straight to the water. Um, he would have to squeeze the dampness out of each handful of sand until, when all the sand was scooped out, there was a little bitter tasting muddy water collected there from the rains of a month or so ago. To reach the basin, he had a choice of getting down the cliff, which is about 12 feet high, or walking along it until it merged again into the mass of mountains, descending in an easier slope. Ordinarily, this would have been a simple decision. Now he stood for a long time, measuring distances with his eyes, engaging the pain in his body. Looking over the edge of the vertical cliff, he could see a rubble of sharp broken stones at the foot of it with fresh sand scattered on them by the big horn. To hang by his hands and drop the last four or five feet onto those stones was going to hurt and probably add new cuts to his already lacerated feet. So lacerated is a, um, it, it, it's an academic word for cut. So keep that word lacerated in mind. On the other hand, it was a long and painful walk along the cliff and down and then back to the basin, a time consuming walk. And with the sun already above the Eastern mountains, he didn't have much time before the real heat hit him. So if you were to draw this, you would draw a cliff, okay, with a couple choices here. So he's got this, he's standing up here. Um, let me just fix that. So he's standing up here. He's the, he's the little puddle or catch basin, okay? And he has to decide, is he going to uh, hang off the cliff and fall down, okay? And there's all this rocks and stuff down here, sharp rocks that will lacerate his feet, or he can walk down and around and walk to the catch basin, which will take longer. So he has to decide, okay? Which option? Option one, option two. Now, one of the reasons why we're thinking about this too is because we're trying to see how Ben is very methodical 
that he's not just doing anything based on panic. Uh, let's see. From, from, the, from the top of the cliff, he could see the Jeep parked at the base of the mountains. Maidick had made a neat camp there, putting up the tent and stretching the canvas awning. There was no sign of him, but he could easily be sitting comfortably in the canvas, folding chair in the deep shade under the awning, watching him. Ben got down on his hands and knees and eased his body over the cliff, edge of the cliff, slowing the swing downward with his legs and knees rather than with his sore feet. So he chooses option one and decides instead of landing on his feet that he's gonna try to land on his legs. Whatever it was smacked into the cliff with a hard, dry sound. A little cloud of dust, the rock particles big enough to see, leaped out from the flat stone face, hung a second and then dropped away. Ben knew that he had been hit even as he let go and dropped. It seemed to him as he, as he fell that he had been hit even before he heard the sound and saw the dust, although he knew that it had not been that way. So you could probably have a guess in your mind as to how he was hit. Even without even reading further on, you know that Maedek has the guns. So as soon as Maedek is out in the Jeep and he sees Ben getting down to get water, um, Maedek shoots at Ben. Something had hit him high on the cheek, hard enough to push his head to one side, but not with the force of a bullet. Falling, he realized that it had been either a chip of rock from the face of the cliff, broken off by the bullet, or a part of the bullet itself shattered and ricocheting. So if the bullet doesn't hit him, it shatters and then cuts his face. Then still falling, he heard the sound of the rifle. Maedek was shooting at him with the Hornet, not the .358. In a box in the Jeep, he had 100, 100 rounds for the Hornet. Maedek had started with 25 rounds for the big gun and had about a dozen left. At the first contact with the ground, Ben made his legs and knees go limp so that he landed almost collapsed, his hands taking some of the weight. Ugh, the pain made him grunt out loud. Blood running down his chest suddenly made him aware of the pain in his cheek so that it's cut deep enough that it's running down his body. He felt it lightly with his fingertips but could only tell that there was an open cut about an inch long just below his eye. There were new cuts on his feet also. One of them near his ankle was bleeding rather badly. Even squatting there, he had a view of the camp below and now saw that Maedek was kneeling in the back of the Jeep, the hornet lying across the canvas top. Ben felt a wave of defeat as he pushed himself up with, the hand, with his hands and at last stood straight. He could not tell from here whether the catch basin was in view of the hornet's scope, but as he started toward it, he had a strange feeling of inevitability. The basin would be in easy range and clear view. Ben just knew that. This time he heard the bullet go past him. It was so close that he heard not only the sharp little click noise it made in flight, but the actual sound on the stone behind him. Then the crack of the rifle poof, rolled lazily up to him. Would made it deliberately shoot him, he wondered. Ben decided he had to find out. Ignoring the pain in his feet, he leapt forward, running as hard as he could toward the catch basin. Little noisy explosions on the cliff face went ahead of him all the way, the bullets missing him by inches. The man was a good shot, leading his target very accurately. Ben threw himself forward on his stomach. The catch basin was at the bottom of a small depression, and when he lay flat down this way, perhaps Maida could not see him. There was silence from the desert as Ben inched forward, using his bare elbows against the stone. So if I'm correct, now Ben has been being shot at, and now he's on his, uh, he's using his elbows to inch himself over to the catch basin, hoping that Maida in the Jeep, this is probably not accurate as to where Maida is, with the, who has the gun, so Maedek has the gun. This is a terrible drawing of a gun. 
Uh, and remember, the gun has a scope on it, so we can see up close. So Maddox here with the gun. Always going to draw a hat on Maddox, I think. And so Ben's thinking, is he really going to shoot at me as I'm trying to get water? But maybe if I'm down low enough, he can't see me. Uh, let's see. Uh, there was silence from the desert as Ben inched forward using his bare elbows against the stone. The bullet struck just in front of his face. So yes, so yes, Maedek is going to shoot at Ben to prevent him from going to that catch basin. Filling his eyes with sharp dry dust, which smelled of ozone. Ben pushed on, reaching out to the edge of the basin. The bullet knocked rocks out from under his fingers. Maedek was now standing on the hood of the jeep, his arm in the rifle sling. That was not as good as having the rifle barrel resting across the top of the jeep. Not as steady. A little gust of wind, a little tremor from a heartbeat, and whether Maedek wanted to or not, the bullet would hit him, meaning Ben. A piece of quartz just in front of his eyes suddenly psh, split open, showering him with bright crystals. Even if he was not hit directly by a bullet, these sharp slivers of rock flying around could take his eyes out. Ben rolled over on his back and sat up, waving his arms around. So he rolls over, he's waving his arms around. Then he pushed himself up to his feet. Ben made a helpless gesture with his arms and turned away from the basin, walking slowly, picking his way. As he went back to the top of the range, he studied the big horn sign, hoping to find another trail that would lead him to another water hole. But except for the trail he had followed there was only sign of aimless wanderings. Near the summit, he sat down in the shade on the western side of an outcrop of stone. So we will stop there. I stopped, I read from page um, 56 to uh, 62. We'll pick up on page 62 in our next reading. Thank you for joining me and I look forward to reading to you again.